Hey, today we are in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and chapter 26. We'll be reading from the Good News Translation. Suppose two Israelites go to court to settle a dispute and one is declared innocent and the other guilty. If the guilty one is sentenced to be beaten, the judge is to make him lie face down and have him whipped. The number of lashes will depend on the crime he has committed. He may be given as many as 40 lashes, but no more. More than that would humiliate him publicly. Do not muzzle an ox when you are using it to thresh grain. If two brothers live on the same property and one of them dies, leaving no son, then his widow is not to be married to someone outside the family. It is the duty of the dead man's brother to marry her. The first son that they have will be considered the son of the dead man so that his family line will continue in Israel. But if the dead man's brother does not want to marry her, she is to go before the town leaders and say, my husband's brother will not do his duty. He refuses to give his brother a decent he descended among the people of Israel. Then the town leaders are to summon him and speak to him. And if he refuses to marry her, his brother's widow is to go up to him in the presence of the town leaders, take off one of his sandals, spit in his face, and say, This is what happens to the man who refuses to give his brother descendant. His family will be known in Israel as the family of the man who had his sandal pulled off. If two men are having a fight and the wife of one tries to help her husband by grabbing hold of the other man's genitals, show her no mercy, cut off her hand. Do not cheat when you use weights and measures. Use true and honest weights and measures so that you may live a long time in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord hates people who cheat. Remember that what the Amalekites did to you as you were coming from Egypt? They had no fear of God, and so they attacked you from the rear when they were when you were tired and exhausted and killed all who were straggling behind. So then, when the Lord your God has given you the land and made you safe from all your enemies who live around you, be sure to kill all the Amalekites so that no one will remember them any longer. Do not forget. After you have occupied the land that the Lord your God has given you and have settled there, each of you must place in a basket the first part of each crop that you harvest, and you must take it with you to the place, to one place of worship. Go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, I know, now acknowledge to the Lord my God that I have entered the land that he promised our ancestors to give us. The priest will take the basket from you and place it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then in the Lord's presence you will recite these words. My ancestor was a wandering Aramean who took his family to Egypt to live. They were few in number when they went there, but they became a large and powerful nation. The Egyptians trusted us, treated us harshly, and forced us to work as slaves. Then we cried out for help for the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and he heard us and saw our suffering, hardship, and misery. By his great power and strength, he rescued us from Egypt. He worked miracles and wonders and caused terrifying things to happen. He brought us here and gave us this rich and fertile land. So now I bring to you, to the Lord, the first part of the harvest that he has given to me. Then he set the basket down in the Lord's presence, then set the basket down in the Lord's presence and worship there. Be grateful for the things that the Lord your God has given you and your family, and let the Levites and the foreigners who live among you join in the celebration. Every third year, give the tithe, a tenth of your crops, to the Levites, the foreigners, the orphans, and the widows, so that in every community they will have all they need to eat. When you have done this, say to the Lord, none of the sacred tithe is left in my house. I have given it to the Levite, the foreigners, the orphans, and the widows, as you commanded me to do. I have not dissipated or forgotten any of your commands concerning the tithe. I have not eaten any of it when I was mourning. I have not eaten any of it out of the, my house when I was ritually unclean. And I have not given any of it as an offering to, for the dead. I have obeyed you, O Lord. I have done everything you commanded concerning the tithe. Look down from your holy place in heaven and bless your people, Israel. Bless also the rich and fertile land that you have given us as you promised our ancestors. Today, the Lord your God commands you to obey all his laws. So obey them faithfully with all your heart. Today, you have acknowledged the Lord your God. You have promised to obey him, to keep all of his laws and to do all he commands. Today, the Lord has accepted you as his own people, as he promised you. And he commands you to obey all his laws. 
He will make you greater than any other nation that he has created. And you will bring praise and honor to his name. You will be his own people as he promised. That last part, probably the best prayer that you can you can do today is just thanking him that you're going to follow him and keep his commands. And then God is going to bless us in return. Have an awesome day.